Should we leave this one open? I'll put someone in. I mean, it's up to you. Nah, I guess we start. Everyone, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can everyone please remain standing? A moment of silence for Anthony Moreno. Uh, he passed away over the weekend. Anthony Moreno, if you don't know, he was a community board member a long time. He was appointed in 1991, and he served until 2014. In that time, he was also vice chair and chair of community board. So please, a moment of silence. Thank you. What's up, team? Who wrote for? Red Sevilla, Lucy Cirillo, here. Malika Shabazz, present. Alton Dirk Smith, here. Gregory Spock, present. Marcello Testa, here. Vivian Sang, here. Damian Vargas, here. Lewis Walker, here. Rosa Wong, here. Min Wang Yang, here. And Lester Youngblood. Oh, okay. So, um, we have a quorum. Yeah, we have a quorum. So, having received the minutes of the, for the board meeting of May 9th. Uh, um, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I'm sorry. I, I just I know someone mentioned before that they wanted to make a modification. Okay, so, so the correction is to... To make it to hookahs. The new legislation oh. is about Okay, so the new legislation is about hookahs right. and not smoking. Well, they're going to bring that into it as well, but hookahs are the main But, but that's where it is. Okay. 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 Thank you. Um, also, there's another correction. Sure. Ruby Muhammad was not marked president, even though she was here at the last meeting. Yeah. Okay, good. We'll make note of that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Any other corrections, modifications? Is there a... I think he had raised before, so. Thank you. 
All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Anyone against the motion? Anyone uh, uh, in abstention? Motion passes. Okay, so report of the chairperson, that's me, in case you don't know. Um, and I'm sure everyone has noticed already that we have an empty chair over here where usually we have a tall guy sitting next to me. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Christian had an accident about a couple of weeks ago, uh, just about two weeks ago. It's not a serious, serious accident, but it's serious enough that he is, um, pretty much something heavy fell on him and he broke his collarbone. So, you know, if anyone has ever had an injury like collarbone or ribs, you know that there's not much that can be done except just wait for it to heal. He has been in contact with the office. He has been working remotely. I was actually with him today. I was driving him around because we wanted to catch up with things. Um, he is in some pain, you know, there are good times and there are bad times. So it's, it was best for him to not be at this meeting because he would just be sitting here in pain right now if he was here. He is watching us right now. So if we could say hi to him and hopefully he feels better. I don't know which camera, but just say hi to him and hopefully he feels better. Um, and you know, he'll, he'll, he'll reach out to, to us and to everyone eventually explain what went on and what's going on. But, but that's what happened and he is okay, he is getting better, but it's just gonna be a slow process for him to do that. So just wanted to let everybody know about that. Um, we have, I just saw a Deputy Inspector Manson here. Um, do you wanna say a few words uh, before I keep on? I know you're here, so. Um, so I think everyone received an email from the community board office, probably from Christina, well, with regards to committee selections. Uh, we will be selecting new committee members. Um, in that form, I think it was, a, it was an email, I think it was a link to a Google Documents link. I think we've gotten about 13 responses right now. Um, and I know she's given out to people here as well, uh, the sheets for them to fill out for them to select the committees. So it's going to be three, you know, pick your top three committees. I understand, especially for the new members, you haven't had a chance to pretty much figure out, been here long enough to know what commit, where each committee is. But, um, you know, try to do your best, speak to someone if you are interested. I mean, obviously, we're not going to be able to accommodate everyone with a top choice. We will try to do as best as we can, but just know that, you know, we need, we, we probably need to reshuffle the committees as they exist. And we'll try, we'll do our best to try to fit everyone in, into their, you know, their committee of choice of, of interest. Um, you will also notice either on the forms or on the email that there's a new box now that's asked whether or not you would consider or interested in becoming a chairperson. I think it's something that can help us out. Not that we're gonna remove any chairpersons, but it's just we wanna make sure that we have, if we're selecting new chairpersons, we wanna know that we select someone that probably has an interest of being a, uh, a chairperson. I know not everyone is vocal. We don't know everybody yet. And I just wanna make sure that at least we consider everyone who potentially can be a chairperson. Um, I think those, uh, w once we get there, we're gonna be working over the summer to make sure we get the committees ready. And by September, hopefully the new committees will be in place. And obviously we'll communicate over the summer and let you know what the new committees will be. Um, also, uh, two weeks ago, probably three weeks ago, there was an executive, uh, executive committee meeting. At that meeting, I believe we had Lucy, we had um, Ashley, I believe Erica was there as well. Um, we had, you know, as an advisory member, we have um, Lou Walker as well, you know, being that, you know, I'm new and most of us are new as well. We just want to make sure that, you know, we're doing things correctly. And, um, and yeah, I think that's who was there. So, oh, and Deborah, I'm sorry, and Deborah, Deborah was there as well. Sorry, I was forgetting you. I know there was another one. Um, we spoke about many different things. Excuse me? I thought someone said something. Of, 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 of importance, just to let you know that we were speaking about raises for the, our employees, CB4 employees. Uh, we discussed it and they were approved, so they got raises. Um, the second thing we were talking about, and I know this is probably gonna bring up, you know, you know, it's not gonna be popular, but you know, even before I became chairperson, one of the things that I saw and I was hoping that perhaps we can change at some point is the public forum that we have at the end of the meeting. Now, I understand we had the public forum at the end of the meeting, but one Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I've been in talks with Christian, and I believe I'm waiting on word from Christian regarding uh, availability. But again, we, we are happy to, uh, Congressman Crowley and our office is happy to, uh, to set up a meeting. It's really whenever, uh, whenever the community board 
leadership is available and, and you guys want to do it. Oh, yeah, Thank hopefully. You. Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. For our office, yeah. You absolutely right. Uh, our office is 718-358-6364. I think Olivia also had a question. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, it's not my meeting. I have a question for you. Yes, uh, we have in your uh, Congressman Mang district, we have some American gold stamp mothers. What is she doing to help the mothers? Oh, absolutely. So, so what actually, is she planning to do to help those mothers? Well, well we, we do honor all of our um, Gold Star families. Just recently at one of the veterans parades, the Congresswoman uh, issued a proclamation to honor um, one of, I believe, I think he was from uh, either Forest Hills area, but anytime any request comes into our office to honor these families, we do so. Um, this piece of legislation that I just mentioned was to help uh, families of law enforcement officials who, who are fallen, but uh, we're happy to serve them in any way we can. Excuse me? Veterans Committee or Community? No, she's not on the Veterans Committee, no. She's on the Appropriations Committee in Congress. But we're happy to serve them in any way we can. So. And then, yes, ma'am. Well, yeah, well, well, this bill is, is, is directly for law enforcement. Uh, so, yeah, well, I, I don't know what the laws are right now on the federal books or state books, but this legislation is specific to uh, law enforcement officers. But again, thank you so much uh, for your time. Happy Father's Day. Have a happy summer also. My name is Barney Chow, representing the mayor's. Hi. Uh, some of you, I recognize some of you faces from my former life, but I'm currently a social worker and community engagement specialist for Thrive NYC, which is the city's mental health initiatives created by First Lady Shirley McRae. Mental health is definitely a topic that she is uh, she exper uh, experienced personally and wants to make sure that New Yorkers get covered. Um, I am uh, telling you about NYC Well which is the city's mental health hotline. You may have seen the ads on subways, uh, train station, uh, subways and uh, TV. Uh, I just want to tell you that 888 NYC Well is definitely a great service to use. I've used it myself, and I can tell you that they give great mental health support from mental health specialists. So I'd love for all of you to pass along the message. I have more of these pamphlets in the back, and I could always, always uh, give it to you personally, or if you work in an organization, I could always stop by to give you more of these. These are in 13 different languages. So uh, we're trying to get as many New Yorkers uh, covered as possible. Also, uh, there's something called mental health first aid trainings, which is almost like CPR for mental health. They are free eight hour classes. If you would like to participate, feel free to uh, speak to me about it or I'll give you my phone number if you're interested. I could get you signed up. If you represent an organization, we could bring trainings to your site. Uh, pretty much it's talking about, uh, the trainings talk about mood, cognitive disorders, as well as bystander intervention for serious topics such as depression, anxiety, and suicide. So feel free to hit me up. Uh, does anybody have any questions about Thrive? Yeah. My phone number is 646-599-0611. Barney Chow. Barney like the dinosaur, Chow like puppy Chow. Yes. Thank you. So calling this number, it's for anybody. Any, uh, uh, people can call anonymously. They do not need insurance. If there is a need for long-term mental health support, they will give referrals that are free, low cost. If there's issues with insurance, the uh, city has Get Covered, which helps people uh, sign up for insurance. HHC Plus, uh, I'm sorry, HHC Options is one of the things that uh, people, especially undocumented immigrants, can utilize to get uh, insurance. Thanks. Thank you. you have any other legislators?
now we're gonna go on to our speakers. Um, is it Steve? Steven? Yep. Okay. So we ha we have Stephen. Hopefully, I spell I can uh, pronounce it right. At at Anani. Yeah. All right, great. <laughs> From the Department of uh, Consumer Affairs. Hi everyone. Can you hear me? I don't know if this is on yeah, or not. not okay, gotcha. Right. If you can't hear me, you know, just shout out and I'll try to project a little bit better. My name is Steve Etzenai. I'm from the New York City Department of Consumer Affairs. Um, it's really great to be here. Um, I know that my colleague Carlos over here in the in the blue shirt uh, presented before the Consumer Affairs Committee uh, on June 8th, I believe, to kind of give an overview of what our agency does. Um, and this is kind of a follow-up to that to speak a little bit to the priorities of our agency. So just to give you a little bit of background about DSA very quickly. Um, we license over 80,000 businesses in the city. Um, you know, every you know every type of business from uh, you know a, a local bodega that may have a, a cigarette retail dealer license, for example, to um, a larger business, for example, that may be selling used car used cars. Uh, so. Anything, uh, what I always say when, when you're talking about DCA is, you know, if there's money exchanged between a consumer um, and a business, our agency is implicated in some way uh, for sure. Uh, we enforce one of the oldest uh, laws on the, on the city books, the consumer protection law that ensures that um, if, you know, if you were deceived or, or defrauded, um, there are rights and uh, uh, legal options available to you through our agency to help uh, make sure that you receive restitution if, if the case n may need. Um, there is, uh, it, the reason why I'm here today is to speak about a pr an issue of particular concern to our agency and our commissioner, Laura Le Salas, um, and that has to do with predatory lending. Um, does anybody know what predatory lending is? I'm happy to kind of speak a little bit more to that. Um, essentially, a loan in New York State that exceeds 16% interest or higher uh, is considered predatory. Um, we have instances uh, across the city and through consumer complaint data that we've aggregated that shows that an inordinate amount of consumers in the city are being taken advantage of by way of um, loans uh, through alternative financial providers. Uh, those providers are those that fall outside the traditional banking system. For example, um, check cashers would be one uh, uh, very significant example of that. And we know that folks go to these uh, alternative financial service providers because they're strapped for cash. They may need money in a short period of time and they may not have the funds available to meet a credit card payment or a car payment, for example. Um, so we want to get the word out about a, a specific type of predatory lending that's going on in the city as well as some resources that are available to you all that you may not know about. Um, so first things first, uh, you know, as I said, our, our agency, like many, if not all agencies in the city, aggregate data based on complaints and feedback that we receive from the community. And um, specifically regarding predatory loans, what we're seeing is that uh, predominantly folks are getting taken advantage of at used car dealerships. Um, and we know that this is an issue that affects um, communities in the outer boroughs like Queens. Um, where you know folks like yourselves rely on cars not only to see friends and family, but um, in most cases to get to your job. It's uh, you know a necessity in the city where you may uh, not have easy accessibility to a subway or bus station. Um, basically, what we're seeing when folks are going to use car dealerships is that they are given a stack of papers that they don't understand. Um, in some cases, a stack of papers in a language that they, not, they may not be speaking fluently um, in, and uh, they're just told to sign on the bottom line. And at the end of the day, um, what we see is that these folks are signing up for a car with an APR or an interest rate um, in excess of 20% in many cases. Um, and they're on the hook for years. Um, and the reason why our commissioner, myself, and my colleagues are so um, adamant and, and uh, you know, 
feel the need to get out and speak to this issue in public is because of the, the, the cyclical effect of debt that this causes to the consumer. When you, when you get wrapped into a loan like that, you are going to be on the hook paying just the interest, not the principal, in many cases for like 20 plus years. It's going to become increasingly hard for you to build up things like savings um, and to uh, put away money for your retirement and, and other, uh, you know, build up and, and achieve other, you know, financial achievements like owning a home and things of that nature. Um, so I want to tell you about two significant legal actions that we've taken. Um, has anyone ever heard of Major World? Yeah. Yep. So you can't you can't miss those commercials. You got the the naked cowboy and all of that, and uh, you know it seems really enticing and it's a memorable commercial and it's a great advertisement. But they are one of the most egregious businesses in the city in terms of taking advantage of consumers. Um, they will, uh, you know, invite folks, for example, that may speak Spanish only and give them contracts in English only and tell them to just sign the bottom line. Um, they'll give them cars that are lemons um, and, and again, give them, uh, you know, retail installment contracts that are in excess of 20% in many cases. So uh, we announced a, a legal action against Major World um, in excess of $2 million. Um, and I just want to say that that $2 million affects about 30 consumers in the city. So you can imagine, we know that more than 30 people go to Major World. Uh, and you can imagine the actual amount of consumer harm that's going on here. Uh, we recently also put a legal action together um, against USA One, which is in Brooklyn. Um, a little bit less known, there's no Naked Cowboy on their advertisements, but um, still, this is a, a legal action that's to the tune of uh, more like one and a half million dollars. So um, stay tuned on that, and we'll, you know, we'll definitely come back and give an update. Um, but what you all need to know, um, and my colleague Carlos will be handing out um, flyers that tell you exactly what to do when you go to a, a used car dealership, or if you're interested in buying a car in general, what your rights are um, that you don't have to finance, for example, through the dealership. Go to your bank, go to your credit union, assess your options. Um, they are not allowed to tell you that you know, this deal is just good for you know, this visit only. You're not allowed to come back. Um, there's all types of intimidating sales tactics that they try to take um, consumers or try to take advantage of consumers that are not in the know about. So we'll pass out that information. Um, but the, really the most important thing is twofold. One, if you are a victim of predatory loans, and again, this could be at a used car dealership, it could be um, a, a loan that you may get from, this is completely illegal in New York State, but certainly tell us if this is the case, if you get a loan from a check casher, um, or any kind of loan that you have that's in excess of 16%, we, you know, we should know about that, and we'll be able to, to kind of figure out what the lay of the land is and what, and um, if any city laws or state or federal laws were, uh, um, you know, if, if there were any violation of those laws. So call 311 if you are, you know, have any complaints about if you know anyone a friend or family member who may have been taken advantage of. Um, and also, we have financial empowerment centers in the city. Um, this is a free service. Um, I can't speak um, more highly of it. It is absolutely free one-on-one -on -one professional counseling for anybody who lives or works in the city. All you have to do is call 311 and schedule an appointment. And again, Carlos has information about these financial empowerment centers. You could talk to them about anything from um, alleviating your credit card debt to um, building up savings, student loan questions. If you have, if you yourself are looking, um, are, have student loans or have children that have student loans, they'll explain all of that to you. They'll work with you to, to make a budget. It's an incredible resource that's absolutely free. Um, and these aren't amateurs that are working with you. They're not gonna share your information. These are professionals that are contracted through our agency and it's your tax dollars that are paying for these services and you shouldn't go out and pay a financial counselor when the city has this service absolutely free for you. So I'm happy to answer any questions about that. 
Um, and like I said, uh, my, Carlo my colleague here, Carlos, will um, you know, pass out information related to both of those things. So thank you so much. I have a question. Yeah. Many of the retail stores charge you close to 29% to use their card in their particular store. Are you looking into that as well? So any, any interest rate, particularly that's above 24.99%, is criminal in New York State. It's against the, the, you know, when I said that the city enforces one of the oldest laws in the municipality regarding consumer protection, the state's usury laws are like literally the oldest laws in the city and we're, you know, We've outlawed payday lending in, in New York State, so anything above 24.99 is certainly criminal, and if you know of those cases, we definitely want to hear about it, and we can look into it, and we have a, a whole legal team as well as um, folks like myself that work in external affairs that can help get to the bottom of it. Great yep. question. Um, with regards to the class action for Media World, is yep. it open for people to join the class, or will they be setting up a fund, or so, so people who are victims that are not part of the class be able to at some point be uh, compensated for Right, that. so um, that's a great question. Thank you um, for reminding me to speak to this. So this, so this, um, this legal action is only pertaining to 30 consumers, but the ramifications are, you know, potentially that they won't be able to do business in the city. We license these folks, not necessarily the financial aspects of their, of their business, but because there's so much, there was such egregious deception and fraud, we can potentially, um, um, you know, depending, and I don't want to speak too much about ongoing litigation, but depending on how uh, the, the legal case goes, their license is essentially being threatened to operate in the city. So in short, they may not be able to operate in the city. We're also taking in um, additional consumer complaints and information on a daily basis of folks that have either gone to Major World, USA One, or any used car dealership in the city. Um, you can either call 311. Um, I have a bunch of my cards here. You can email or call me directly. Um, and we are, you know, we will use that information not only to build a, a even more robust case against um, dealerships like Major World, but perhaps to take further action if needed. What I recommended is they generate, you make the 301 complaint, then you can send me the number of the 301 complaint, and then I can I can help push that forward through our consumer service division or our legal division um, to adding complaints onto the major world. Yeah, or and other or the complaints you may have. Thank and you. there's one last piece um, that I do do want to mention, and again, I'm happy to take more questions, but um, we're working very closely with the chair of our um, consumer affairs committee in the city council, uh, Rafael Espinal, on legislation that has been introduced um, that will make a lot of these penalty, or a lot of these actions that Major World and other used car dealerships are taking um, actually criminal penalties, um, and uh, make it very clear that if they want to operate in New York City and even take advantage of one consumer. Like I said, this is a cyclical financial harm that can devastate a family generationally. Um, when you're thinking about um, you know, a $40,000 purchase um, or even less, you know, a, a purchase as small as like $10,000 for a used car at 20% interest rate, that is something that will add up to a, de a devastating amount over time. So there is legislation pending right now that's gonna increase disclosures to help you all. Um, it's actually gonna be very similar to the pamphlets that we're, um, that we're uh, dispensing today that it would require them to kind of display them right in the areas where you're negotiating. So it, you, know, you don't have to carry it with you. You could be reminded right then and there when they're saying, oh, you don't need to read this. You could say, you know what, I do. And it's right above you know, the desk that you're working at that you do have to tell me what's in this contract, if this was the, you know, the best rate that you got um, and why, you know, explain the terms of the contract that's in front of me. So. Um, you know, we are we are making uh, actually tangible efforts outside of the the legal space, um, not only with enforcement in that case, but also legislatively. And we, um, you know, certainly hope that you'll contact um, you know the city council and, and help usher that piece of legislation through. Yeah, sure. Excuse me? The high cost yeah. 
is including the medication. The medication? medication. 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 Um, yeah, I would need to know a little bit more about it. I don't think I'm familiar with, with uh, you know, I'm happy to talk to you offline about if there are certain cases where you're, yeah. I know somebody that's using medication in the table for allergy. Yeah. have to carry it on them all the time, just in case. And they from $100 going up to $700. Mm -hmm. So this is, I see where you're going. This is more for like lending purposes and, and less so like the product, like the price of prescription drugs where the city is kind of preempted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you tell me more about it, I could definitely, it doesn't sound like something that DCA would cover. It, it might in some circumstances. I just need to know more about it, but I'll give you my card and we can, I could point you in the right direction if it's not a DCA issue. Yep. All the advanced cash, and they tell you that the interest rate is anything from whatever to, and I think it goes over 16%. Mm -hmm. Is that also uh, covered under um, like usury laws, or is? Yeah. So there, there are some exceptions to it, and again, um, a lot of it, you know, ultimately, the rates that credit cards give you are dependent on your credit score, um, but. More often than not, I would say this, um, certainly if you visit a financial empowerment center, and um, I think I failed to mention this, but there's one, at the, the nearest one is at Make the Road, um, just in, in Jackson Heights, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, nine, I would say nine times out of 10, they, could, they, they can um, highlight other options that may be available to you, yep. Company to charge over 16 percent. Right. It's not illegal for a credit card company to charge over 16 percent. Almost like piggybacking on what Lou said. Right. Where they can charge anywhere up to 25 percent. So to clarify, I mean it's not illegal for car used car dealerships to go over 16 percent either. And okay. the same things with credit cards. Just when they go over 16 percent, there's more reporting that's required. And there's more regulations that they have to comply yeah. with. But regardless, if if you see a loan that's above sixty percent, that's when you should all open your eyes. That's when we should all open our eyes and say, "This is this is predatory. This could be abusive or unfair." Okay. Now, if a loan goes above twenty four point nine nine percent, that is illegal, regardless if it's a credit card or anything else. So you should bring those. If you have documentation, you should bring that to us. So when you said earlier about a credit um, a used sales uh, uh, um, company, whatever they call, yep. charges twenty percent. So essentially, it's that in it of itself is not illegal. It's just the procedure, the process? So it depends on the circumstance of what, okay. how they gave you that loan. Just but to be clear, I just yeah, I yeah, absolutely. So like there is a civil usury cap. So right. from 16 to 24.99, yeah. that is considered to be usurious okay. civilly. 24.9 or above is criminal. Okay. Um, so there's some some gray area there, but I would say like as a as a rule of thumb is that if it certainly outside of, you know, if you're at a used car dealership in particular, and they're giving you a rate that's above 16%, you should contact us, and we will be able to, you know, find out what the details of the circumstance are. Most of the consumers that complain to us regarding, especially in the used car space, we actually found out that their loans were predatory in nature. Their original complaints to us were that their car broke down or that they won't repair it. And then we looked into their case file and we saw, wait, did you get this contract, for example, just in Spanish when, or just in English when you're a, a Spanish only speaker? And they're like, yes. And you know, they'll, you know, we'll find out that their rate was, you know, above 16% and most likely than not, we're able to, get, you know, work on a remedy that gets it lowered. So um, that just speaks to the importance of education and speaking to folks about, um, you know, the laws in the city and the state. And, um, you know, Carlos and I will hand out information about it to make sure that you're all aware. We have Diane Dreyer and Jackie Harris from New York Department of Parks.
I can, I'm just going to block yeah, a lot no, of people. No, that's what I'm asking. We can move the microphone, but it stays down. So. Sorry, this yeah, is. Yeah, no, no, what's that? Can you take the mic out? Oh, yep. I can take the mic out. I will. Diana heard you. I'm taking it out. Yeah, so, I mean, so people don't know this being on the street live as well. So the microphone. Okay. That's perfect. So you're talking to both, right? Yep, gotcha. Just like this. Is that good? Okay, great. Okay. All right, we'll start again. Um, so this project is located in Elmhurst Park. Our goals with uh, creating this space in conjunction with the uh, entrance will, and this, where we'll be designing, where the space is designed, is right off of Grand Avenue here. Um, those of you that know the park, it's that oval space directly next to the comfort station. Um, here's a close, a little more closer view of, again, where that, that entrance is off of Grand and the comfort station here. Um, just a few existing photos. So here's the oval, the comfort station, the ring of trees that surround that, and the uh, existing benches. Again, another view. This is from the comfort station looking into that green oval and flagpole. So um, our intent here, our design intent here was to, uh, this space, let me step back. This space initially was designed to be a memorial. So when the master plan for this park came about many years ago, this space was specifically designated for, the for a Vietnam Vets Memorial. Um, we did the park completion and then we came back in presently to, to work on the memorial. Oops, sorry, I went too far ahead. So this is, this is the memorial uh, as, it's, as we intend to um, install. You come into the space here, you ramp down into the space here. There are two walls. This wall has the names of the fallen as well as a brief history of the war. This wall here is a title wall that's, that has the title as well as um, the military, cr five crests of the military as well as the Vietnam Service Medal. There's a planted area here. There's a planted area here. Um, the one thing that's important to note with this design is that you still have that quiet space which existed before. So if you don't wanna go into the memorial, you can still have that contemplative quiet space that, that exists today. Um, other elements, uh, let me go to the next one because that will help a little bit more. So this is a better uh, picture of the memorial as we intend to um, construct it. 
Here's the existing flagpole. You step down two steps in, from this side, three steps from the other side. There is a bench here for, con for those who want to sit. There's a map here um, in the center of Vietnam and the surrounding area so that those can come and read the history and then see the corresponding area on the map. Um, along this side, back side of the wall, we, are going, we have etched bamboo, one of the elements, um, one of the plants that is symbolic with, with Vietnam um, and symbols of the war. What else? The ramp here, you see the ramp come down here, and we are also going to have additional plantings to soften the space. Here's another view looking from the other side with that title wall, the five crests of the military, the title, the Vietnam Memorial, will have low planting in front of that. This will also be illuminated here as well as the wall, if I go back one, as well as the wall here. This will be up, illuminated up so that you can see the names. The other thing to note here, the location of this wall was um, decided so that the sun hits the names almost the entire day. So this, this, that's one thing that we wanted to make sure we did as we designed this. Okay. Here's another view looking in from the main entrance. You can see that the um, Vietnam um, service medal here, the title wall again. You step down and up towards the top of the wall. It's also uh, designed so that those in a wheelchair as well as those standing have easy reach of the names. Here's the intended bench, how, are the, how the text will look, and that's the plan. Thank you. So the, the next thing we're going to do is talk about Newtown Playground. This was a, a playground that um, graciously was funded by the borough president and Councilman Drum. We started this project with a scope meeting last June 2016, where we had community members present, Councilman Drum, borough president's members were there, represented from the borough president. And our, our, council, our uh, commissioner Lewandowski's representatives were also there. We received um, direction at that scope meeting. We then proceeded to create a, a, a design, which we gave to the Public Design Commission for a conceptual review. They gave us a good report. We then went to the council people and the borough president, who also became, who were very supportive of the design. We then went to the park committee, your park committee, who unfortunately we didn't have a quorum at that point but the members who were there were also in support of the plan. So we were then asked to come to you, all full, a, a full board for a, a complete vote and a support. So I'm gonna turn over to Jackie and she's gonna explain the design, okay? Thank you, Diane. Um, so Newtown Playground is located on 92nd between 56th and 57th avenues. You can see here, this is the focus area for the project. It's 92nd here, 56th and 57th, correct me if that's the right order. <laughs> um, So the goals of the project are to focus on the upper portion of the site. Our, our main focus was to apply a design that is sensitive to the archaeology of the site. We wanted to create a passive sitting area around the flagpole, discourage active play in the site, discouraging active play. Right. Currently, what is happening, and I can, I can speak to this when we get to the images. We wanted to discourage active play with new plantings and improve park security and accessibility. Okay. 
So let's first discuss some of see that Toledo Avenue, which is now 92nd Street, um, came through the site. And at that time, families re re relocated some of their members to other uh, sites in Queens. In 1917, the park was transferred uh, to New York City parks with existing play equipment on site. It had been used as a playground for a number of years, years at this point. In 1937, the first formal design was installed on site. And here you can see pavement over the majority of the site, a wading pool. And I apologize, some of this text is in white. Um, and it's hard to read, but you can see play equipment surrounding the wading pool with a small area of green on the outside of the site. This is the state that the park is currently in. Uh, in 1997, uh, parks had an um, archaeology report done which informed the design that you currently see now with the um, raised area here and play equipment on this side of the site. So currently, um, we are looking to create, to maintain the passive use of this upper portion of the site. Um, existing, this area is um, sand and gravel and um, a pockmarked lawn with the majority of the plantings from the 1997 design um, damaged or have died. So this area doesn't have the appeal that it maybe once did. Um, this corner of the site, which is here, um, the pillar which is existing has been climbed over and damaged so that it, it, um, it the, the security of the site is no longer there because people are hopping this and um, sort of uh, scaring the people who are there um, trying to enjoy the park. Uh, this wall here is, is this wall to the east and um, it just needs some attention and that'll, that'll be part of this project as well. So the Skype, Skype excuse me, scope items for this project are to improve the accessibility on site, improve site security, create a passive seating area, a passive strolling area, and improve the plantings. While considering the history of this site, we understood that we needed to really maintain, um, really understand the history and be respectful of that uh, while creating the design. And we wanted to create meandering paths with simple and beautiful plantings. So this is the design that we came up with. You can see, <clears throat> to improve the accessibility of the site, we've, we propose to open this um, gate, which is currently locked, which will allow an at-grade entrance for the entire park. Currently, people have to go down this ramp, strollers, wheelchairs, and it's very steep. This improves the accessibility of the site with a path that will allow people to go from the playground and through um, w whether they have a stroller, a wheelchair, what have you. And it opens up this accessible passive seating area to the rest of the park. From here, you can enjoy the meandering paths and take a, take a rest and seat along the way. And enjoy the variety of blooms and plantings that will now enhance the experience. Along with this, there is a mounded lawn, which, which will discourage the ball play that is currently happening on site and will allow that area to become a calmer, more passive site. So you can see this is uh, a, 
um, a rendering, an image of what the entrance might look like with the seating area, the path coming up from the playground, and the enhanced plantings. This is what the mounded lawn will look like. Um, at the peak from the, from the existing, it'll, it'll um, go up by two feet, six inches. We've kept the materials very simple and in, in align, aligned with what exists on site. The benches will match what's there. The pavement will match colors that are existing on site. Again, simple, beautiful. It looks like maybe there's a lot, but it'll be um, large numbers, uh, you know, a few cherry trees in a row, a few dogwoods in a row. And again, simple shrub and perennial palette um, to just keep the site calm and interesting throughout the year. And again, here's the plan. I thank you for hearing us tonight. We're going to move on to the committee's reports, and at the committee reports for the Parks Department, we will go ahead, and I believe they're seeking a vote on the Newtown Playground uh, design, so we'll vote on it at, at that point. And, you know, I keep forgetting, I keep wanting to, to mention this every time I, I, you know, there's a break, but I just wanted to make note that we have John Rowan, who is sitting right here in the front, and I know you're about getting ready to leave, but for people who don't know who John Rowan is, he was the first chair of Community Board 4, okay? District manager, my bad, district manager. And, and he is also a Vietnam veteran. I was actually a member board for in those days when I was in college, going to grad school. Uh, this is after the military. And then uh, I became the first district manager in 1977, 40 years ago. Right. Uh, this whole action started 40 years ago. Jimmy was a little kid then. <laughs> thank you for, for, for uh, accompanying us today. No, so, I appreciate you getting the shot to come back and say hello to people. When we first started, we used to meet in, a, in an OTV over on Broadway. Uh, I used to be there at one time. We had the office above there, and then it bounced around. You folks have been here for quite a while. So, so, so is this an upgrade? Pardon? Is this an upgrade? Uh, at least you don't have to walk up the flight of stairs like that, a very long flight of stairs like that. <laughs> that, 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 that was a long trip. But uh, anyway, good luck with everybody. It's nice seeing some people I have. Most of you I do not know, but it's nice to see the folks that are still kicking around and still keeping everybody in line over here. Uh, clearly, this board, and I, I was just looking at the numbers. When I was the district manager, the population was about 125, 130,000 for this district. You're now up to almost 178, almost 180,000. And we didn't grow any more land. So you know everything's gotten more squished in. And we were very highly densely populated then, now it's even worse. Uh, clearly the, uh, the, the changes that have gone on in this community have been very interesting. And by the way, they're reflected in the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Because if you look at that memorial, and when it gets built, and you look at the names, this was, don't forget, this is a snapshot from the 60s, from the late 60s to 1972. When we did the uh, triangle on 75th Street and Broadway, where we have a Vietnam Veterans Memorial for the Elmhurst KIAs killed in action, you've got uh, five Hispanic names. We know one of them was Ecuadorian. He was the last one killed in 1972. We know that another one was from Colombia. We have no idea what the other three were. We also have a kid who was born in France, a kid who was born in Lithuania, and three Americans that were born in, in New York City. And that was the makeup of Queens in that period of time, and that's clearly reflected on those who went off to war, and who will be on that wall. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move on to committee reports, uh, and the first committee is parks, but um, I don't think Al's here today. No, so um, the only thing that, that I understand we're doing is voting on the proposal that was just presented on Newtown Playground. Um, having 
heard the presentation. Does anyone have a motion with regards to that playground? I have a motion to vote no. Okay, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yes, say again. I have a, a motion to make to vote no for the current uh, proposal. Um, for the redesign to include... Hold on, silence, please. For the redesign to include and allocate, if not for now, but the future, a memorial to actually the people that are still buried underneath there. And also the people that... That wasn't the third proposal. That wasn't the second proposal. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the only thing we're voting on today is the Newtown Playground, which is yeah. the second proposal, not the first proposal. Oh, okay. Not the memorial. Yes. The, the memorial's done. Okay. And so, okay. I apologize. And so work with the community, CB4, and the community groups to make sure this gets funded and to see it through, as well as um, I know there's a lot of trees at the site, so we were worrying about some of those roots with all the trees and just certain little um, aspects of the design. Well, I, 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 well I par Park's it? left, so I don't know if we can even ask questions with I regards. Yeah, open. sure, go ahead. Uh, we got one, then we got Lucy. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, yeah, no, go no. I mean, from my understanding of, of this process, is that there was no process. My understanding was that there was complete disregard for the community board process when you go to a committee and you wait for a quorum, and that's how it happens. My understanding is that there was no quorum at Park's committee, and it just kind of showed up here with a, a very intricate and albeit very articulate presentation and, very uh, expensive. and expensive that's great i mean I'm, you know, i guess we're all, all paying for it but i i second her motion because there i think that we as a community board should embody the process we are the reflection of a of an actual process and for them to just come in here and see all that i think is just disrespectful so i'm seconding uh Marilena's proposal to say no um and hope that they will come back and work with the community board on a more detailed and inclusive proposal sure so having the motion made, having it seconded, open it up for discussion. Anyone has comments, questions? Um, obviously, I can't answer it. Um, Parks is not here anymore, so I guess comments. During, during the, the, the committee meeting that they went to to present, where they're saying there wasn't a quorum, was there a discussion in that meeting about this memorial? No, about, not, about having a memorial. It just happened after the fact, like no. the end of 2016. So they've they had aware. this design since November of 2016 and it's been like repetitive to repetitive you know when we voted back in January also other community groups have been um, you know sending out emails regarding this and there's really been no um, no feedback to work with us and I know they were supposed to present it at the committee um, but there wasn't a quorum they never never bothered to come back either yes. I still think that Alpern is the chair of parks right yes. So I think that we can't do anything. He's yes. the chair of that committee, and we should uh, we should not move forward <laughs> until the chin, if there was no quorum. So something else have to happen, and the chair is not here tonight, and we should not go above the chair head and vote on something that he's not here or a part of. Sure. So I, just I, just I, I, as a rule of order, the motion was made. The motion was seconded. Unless they rescind that motion. We will need to. We need another motion to table this motion, and first have to vote on that motion first to see whether or not this one survives. So at this point, the motion is on the floor. So at this point, the motion is on the floor. Now, I think the easy. I mean, and, and it's up to you the way you want to do. It, but and and um, obviously Lou will correct me if I'm wrong here. One of the things we can do is that if we don't want that to happen right now, we can vote no to the motion. But then, does that mean that the motion passes? Yes. Right. If you vote yes to the motion, the motion. Well, well right now her motion is to deny right. or to so not approve. She said, if you say yes, it's to deny. It's denied. But if they say no, it then is to, to. That's what I'm asking. Is it to approve? No, because it's a no. It just means that it's it's. No, no. Because just see that, like the motion no, is to deny. It's, it's, so if the motion was to pass, it means that we do not accept this proposal. But if the motion was to fail, we just voted on to not deny it. That's it. Not to approve it. Sure. Sure, yes. According to what was passed out, and it says the uh, memorial supported by, and the groups and elected officials that are supporting the memorial, I believe that we should go along with the proposal to deny the park proposal as is until they come back to Parks Department yes. and, and, and have the correct uh, 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 proposal uh, that incorporates the memorial to the, those from the cemetery. I mean, yes. you read the, the, it's right there. 
So we're not doing anything that's against Park or anybody else. We're just asking them to come back. Just like we asked you know, the, 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 uh, them to come back about the Andre Lovett Street project, and they went ahead and did it. Okay. Just like we did go, uh, the, go, uh, the, uh, the Queen Boulevard one, and they did it. I think we should take a stand on this because I'm tired of the city of New York's departments coming into our, our community board and dictating policy to us without hearing from us. So I think this will send a message to them and tell them, hey, come back, talk to us, talk to the people, we know better, and, and, and come back with a better proposal. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Comments, questions? Okay, we need to vote on Okay, so um, we're probably going to call it, we're going to do a roll call on this vote. Okay. So the motion, again, the motion on the floor is to deny the proposal as is. Um, what, what else did you say, Marilena? Uh, deny the proposal as is and um, to work with, you know, TV4 and the groups and the community to allocate that section for a memorial for the deceased. And also, like they did with the Memorial Park, how about some signage? So how about some historical, you know, information for the community? Okay. So, it's, yeah. so if you vote, if you say, I'm sorry. yes. I hope I'm not out of line, but one thing I do want to raise before we make this vote, um, I see here that the youth committee is talking about 50 soccer fields. Where? Sure. Well, the yeah, they're, they're another, yeah, yeah. well, no, it's not another. No, it's not another subject. If all our parks are being used up, and there's not. Yeah. So I'm just saying that um, I think we need to look at a better plan that's going to include, really include the community in that in addition to a memorial, how lovely is it for children to play next to a memorial? I mean, what good is a memorial if it's going to be empty and no one's going to visit? It's empty now. There's nothing, nothing there. It's always meant to be. Yeah, I think people need to know. Well, they can still play in not all those other areas. <laughs> Clarification, just yeah. to know, I think the soccer field is just so we make sure it's not going to be just in our area, it's going to be in New York City in general. I understand what you were saying, I just want to clarify that it's not going to be 50 fields in our community board or in Queens, but it's going to be in the city. No, but I, I do understand what you're saying. I understand, saying. but yes. I'm just saying let's use our let's let's use our parks also for the children sure. as well. Sure. Yep. Okay. okay. We have Clara. Can we reward the motion to table this proposal till the chair, Mr. Perna is able to join us, and uh, then uh, we, we can work. Uh, we can work with the uh, parks com uh, department and uh, the board members, interested about the board members, and we reward at the table and instead of denying, we will table it. Well, well, it's, it's already on. It's already on. If, if the motion, so so just just everyone, sure, it's, it's certain here. The motion is to deny this proposal. If you say yes when you're called upon, it means you do not want this. Okay, and all that's going to happen is that we are denying this. We're not approving it, and it's pretty much in effect what you're asking for is that we haven't taken an, we haven't approved it yet. So it's not, at least in our opinion, it's not going for with our approval yet. Okay? Can I, can I say something? Exactly. Um, like what Sam just said, they're building that like now. Nobody really asks for that. So that's what I'm saying. Like there's no input. Like that doesn't have to be there. But that's what they want. Exactly. Okay. So you know, I don't think it should be like no activity at all. But that's that's what they. You know. and, and anybody else who hasn't spoken has anything to say? Okay. So so we're gonna make a vote. Okay. A vote. A vote on that. So um, Priscilla Caro. Yes. John Carlo Castano. Lucy Terezo Scully. Not here. No, actually. <laughs> Chao Chung Chen, not here. Safat Chowdhury, here. Deborah Clayton, not here. Deborah. Deborah Clayton. Oh, I looked at you and then I'm like. <laughs> no. Yes. Wait, what do you think? If you're for the, if, you're, if you vote yes on this motion, you are voting to deny the proposal that was presented to us. If you vote no for this motion, then it's just in the I guess. But so, uh, yeah, so yes means. If you're agreeing with the motion. Exactly. Yes is to deny. Yes is to deny. Yes is to deny the proposal. No, okay. yes, 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 yes. All right, we got it. Ready to go. Okay, so. Yes. Uh, Linda Coral? Yes. 
Erica Cruz? Yes. Judith D'Andrea? Here. Maria D'Amico? Uh, Maria Elena Jampino? Yes. Ingrid Gomez? Yes. Jennifer Gutierrez? Yes. James Lisa? Yes. Salvatore Lombardo? Yes. I'm sorry? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. I didn't hear you. Peter Manganero? Yes. Patricia Martin? Yes. Ravenia McGowan? Right here. Edgar Moya? Yes. Ruby Muhammad? Oh, she's here. Oh, I'm going to Oh, sorry. Sandra Munoz? Yes. Gurdjieff Singh Narula? Georgina Oliver? No. Winnie O? Yes. yes. Alirio Duna? Yes. Albert Perna? Alexa Ponce? Ashley Reed? Yes. Oscar Rios? Yes. yes. Neil Roman? Christian Romero? Yes. Clara Salas? Yes. Gigi Salvador? Yeah. Red Sevilla, not here. Lucy Cirillo? Yes. Malika Shabazz? Yes. Alton Derek Smith? Yes. Gregory Spock? Yes. Marcello Testa? Yes. Vivian Sang? Yes. Damian Vargas? Yes. Louis Walker? Yes. Rosa, Rosa Wong? Yes. Min Wang Yang? Yes. And Lester Young will not hear. Okay. So motion passes to deny the proposal as is. Okay, we have about 10 new cadets at the 110 precinct. They just 
started uh, this year, this, uh, this May, so I, I hope they'll um, get to be full-fledged police officers because we need them, that's the point. Uh, the latest thing also is SPICE or K2, the illegal artificial mm -hmm. marijuana that's lies in the United States. I asked the 110 officer at a meeting if we have any problems here yet, none at this time. So let's hope it stays that way. Skimmers for ATM, uh, they pretty much got that under control, but uh, Lieutenant LeBlanc made it clear that if you use this, your uh, card and you go into an ATM machine, and you notice that it's a little stiff and it's not that easy, it might have been tampered with. So to think about that if you're going to any of your local stores or banks for that matter. Noise, we have two new officers that have been trained with a noise device. So now we have a big complaint coming in about rumba classes and parties that are given at private homes and as well as business, so hopefully this will help us to get those three one one complaints to go. And uh, we also brought up about July 4th for fireworks. It still is illegal. They advise you to please call 911 and give the specific location of the fireworks. So that was our meeting for that this time. Now, um, we have the liquor licenses to bring up. Unfortunately, again, we did not have a form because one of our members had to leave. And so I'm going to bring to you, uh, as best I can, those that we know are clean, that have no police problems whatsoever. <coughs> so I'm going to address them to you. They're under the renewals. The first one is El Dorado Cafe at 10202 Roosevelt Avenue. We'll do one vote for the ones that are all okay. This makes it easy for everyone. The next one is number two, Kiddo Sushi, Queens 9-15, Queens Boulevard. Number four, La Marie, Marie Nita, the Ecuadorian restaurant at 10906 Corner Avenue. Number five, Tamiya's Gourmet Corporation, 8402 Broadway. Number six, El Gachito, 2 Corporation, 9460 Corner Avenue. Number seven, J&I Products Corporation at Spicy Shallot at 7701 Woodside Avenue. Number eight, Blue Chintunalta, I hope I said that restaurant, at 9606 43rd Avenue. And Roca, Japanese food at the Toma Japanese restaurant at 8914 Queen Boulevard. All of those came out perfectly, so we can have one vote for all of them. Um, usually we uh, are in favor of things like this, so I'm going to bring that up to a vote at this moment. So I move to renew their application. Right, give me a second. Okay. All right, any abstentions? Any questions? Any, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those against? Any abstentions? Aye. Motion passes. All right, now we have the new applicants. Now let me explain what we're we'll coming up to very soon. It's called the 500 rule and the 200 foot rule. The 500 foot rule, for those that are new here, is designed whereas if a, if a new business or a bar wants to come into the community, and they're in the 500 radius of three other businesses that sell a full liquor license, that's a hard liquor, we normally say no. They can't sell liquor, they can sell wine and beer, but they can't sell the hard liquor. Then there's a 200 foot rule. The 200 foot rule, it pertains to the school. If you're within 200 foot of a church and school, again, you can't sell the hard liquor, you're allowed to sell your milk. Now, I'm going to go first with La Mexicana, Della Nortina, at 111-12 Roosevelt Avenue, they have a phenomenal clean record. Uh, they're just doing beer and wine. That will have to be now voted on. So far, from our end, uh, we saw nothing wrong. I'm asking if anybody would like to uh, well, pass that. Just before we go, I just want to make a, you know, and I think we've, I always ask this, but I just want to yeah, make yeah. sure that we do this. You know, with regards to the 200 and 500 for all, yeah. trying to make sure is that even if, if, even if you know, we say that we are denying them or we don't want them approved because of the 200 or 500 foot rule, right. SLA will perform their own assessment yes. of that rule. Yes. And if it's we are incorrect or if, we, or, or if it's not right or it doesn't fall under one the of the exceptions. The 200 foot is pretty adamant. Sure. The 500 foot, there is leeway. Sure. And then the judge and the SLA will, sure. will go sure. So, so, they, so they, even they, if we as community are, are overwhelmed and upset, they can go back, they will assess it, and nine out of ten times, they will they will either so, give it to depending on their background. Yeah. So, so it's yeah, so, so I just think it's important to know, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that yeah. the 200 foot rule, even for SLA, is not an automatic denial, <laughs> but it raises the flag, which causes them to 
prompt a hearing or an investigation yes. to make sure whether or not they fall under the 200, but, but 500 foot rule. 200 is more, more, more final. Sure. The 500 foot rule that they need to do that to. Okay. Because a school and a church, you can't, you can't. Sure. Okay. So oh. I, I just wanted to make that, I want to make that clear yeah, to everybody. That, 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 200 you know, is more, yeah. Perhaps, and, I, and again, correct me if I'm incorrect, maybe the, the committee has as a policy that we don't want establishments that fall within these, that could potentially fall within these two rules. But again, SLA will make the final determination right. whether or not. So even if we deny them for the 200 foot rule because we feel we don't want someone with the 200 foot or with the 500 foot of a church or synagogue, then you know they will make that set, the final that assessment. Decision. Let me see, explain to you because I was one of the ones that fought for the rules a long time ago. <coughs> what we're doing is we're thinking of the business, and who they're bringing in, we're thinking of the community, and we're thinking of how it affects the whole community. When you're overloaded, we, as you all know, we pay a price. So we rather that the judge and SLA make the decision. Because I don't want to get back from the parents, which I hear now, hey, my kid was drinking in that place, and you know, why did he get, I get this all the time, why did he get a liquor license, and why did he do that? And they said, well, they looked like they were very nice. We did this with a few of the, uh, for the last couple of years, we tried to bend the rule a little bit ourselves, <coughs> And one of them is Chevelez, you know that nice restaurant that served us during the, um, the uh, what was it, every year holiday, we get together as a group. Unfortunately, they're no longer active, so we're already seeing a lot of problems that we're not happy with at this point. So it does happen. But we'll relook at it. It doesn't hurt that we relook at it. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what's out there. All these committees have laws, and they do bend. And if you can make the time to come to our committee, we can decide and also talk in length about uh, how this is done. So um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead, and you'll hear this term come up as we go with these new ones, especially. The first one, which is the 111.12, uh, Latina has a clean record, even with the previous owner. Uh, it's not under the 500 foot rule. In cases like this, we kind of like favor it. So again, you'll have to make the decision. That's number one. So what, what, are we making one for each individual? For, yeah, yeah. All right, so, so what, what, what is the... The well, I didn't say the committee's recommendation. Clean, Okay, so is, is there a motion for number one, La, Mexi La Mexican La, League? Yeah, La Latina. It has a very good record, guys. Very good. Okay. There, no there was no, we had no, we had no. The, 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 the reason why they do, we're going to do this individually is because there was not a quorum for them to vote on these applications. Well, none of them. None of them. For none of them. Yeah, just that first bunch, because that was easy, but now they have to go through them. Yeah. I, I, I just said we had a small group. I had a quorum, not a big group. But okay. So, I just have a question. Yes. And then that is, is that the only one of the four listed that had a very good record? Or is there uh, any one of the other four that... I, I think we voted on the ones that have good records. So yes. Yeah. No, we had... No, no, no. That's the new one. Oh, okay. The new one. Okay. No, some do, but uh, I'll be discussing that again. That's why this has to... Right. So yeah. So again, this goes to the fact that when we don't to go to the committee meetings, right. we don't have a quorum. They can't do their job, right. and then we are here doing, doing their job. Here. So Absolutely. I move to uh, we, to give them in a light, the yeah. license that they're seeking. Okay. So Sandra, make the motion to <laughs> approve <laughs> La Mexicana. The second by Patricia. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Any any no's? Any abstentions? Okay. That motion the next passes. One is Cancun Cancun Corporation 10214 Roosevelt Avenue. This one has a history, a terrible history. A new person took over. Now here's the law. When a new person takes over, even though they may have associations with the old one, they are exempt from all the violations, and there were tons of them, sales to minors, intoxication, uh, unlicensed. Uh, uh, bodyguards or whatever you want to call it. Tremendous. <coughs> the sad part is this new owner, when he came to it, already had violations. So I said to him, we got to say no. So we said no to him the first time. He said, well, what can I do? I wasn't there. Someone was selling liquor to somebody the underage. I really want to make this work. So I said, well, go to the court, <coughs> pay your fine, and will we look at it? He did go to court. He asked for the judge to give him some time. They're giving him six months probation. The fine was very heavy. It's in the thousands. His lawyer says he wants to give it a chance. We normally bend on that. He showed that he made an effort. He went down because a lot of them don't pay these fines. So we think we give him a chance. So that's what we're doing for cancer. Did you hear now? No. <laughs> 
So you can't give him a talking to. <laughs> you can't give him a talking to. Well, we did warn him. If this acts up again, he's going to be denied the next time. Remember, it's every two years that they come to us. So just wanted to, I just, um, Christine, just let me know that I believe two of those charges were actually dismissed. They were. Yeah, That's they were what I'm trying to say. He okay. went, he went to court, he did pay. He's on a six month probation with the judge, which is on record. Okay. So if he comes back to us in two years, we'll say, hey, you said you're going to behave not only to us, but to the judge. Okay. So we have something on him the next time he comes to us. So we bet. So it's up to you, brother. Right. So any motion on this? Um, Cancun, Cancun <coughs> Corporation. Can we make the notion to deny? Deny. You yes. can make wh whoever is sitting here. Yeah, I, I don't make, make it worse. I can make a motion to I deny. The meeting, um, I want to make a motion to deny. I think there are too many liquor licenses as is, and ones that are questionable. I don't want to support. Okay. There, there is a motion to deny Cancun Cancun Corporation. Due to the current, the current, the current, and it is seconded yeah. by Alario. I'm seconding yes. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, I want to say I don't know if it, all those 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 against. Okay, we got one. Ingrid, Lou, Sandra. Uh, you can put me down as well. And one abstention. And Lucy is an abstention. Okay. Um, you are. Um, Patricia is an abstention. Either way, pass. All right. All right. So motion passes. Lucy? Okay, number three. We do it. Has to go for This is 40 3773 Street. Whenever anything is under construction and it's not ready to open, we do not give it a liberal license. Though it is also under the 500 foot rule. This was discussed thoroughly. I told him, have him come back. We'll re look at it. We'll talk about the 500 foot rule again. But he has to come back. This is automatically a no because they're not ready. And then we had other people here. So, so again, just to clarify, when right. you say it's an automatically a no, it's an automatic because no of for the, the committee. Because construction first. But, but I'm saying, but there's an automatic no for the committee, or SLA says. No, no. Well, if, it, it's for the committee because we can't. Okay. We don't know. If sometimes we have these places, I start up, sure. and then they decide they don't want to deal with the, the landlord. No, no, that, that's that's fine. Right. I just think so, I, I think it's important that we differ, yeah, yeah, we make the distinction whether you know the committee has decided to say no to these types of. Right. Cases, yes, but it's different from what SLA will say potentially. Well, yes, so, they okay. have to re we have to revisit this one again. They have to come back. Okay. I so, have a question. Yes. Did they uh, disclose to the committee when they plan on opening? No, them? they're not ready. No. Okay. Months from now. Okay. I mean, there's no walls. They not come back. They have to come back. Right. So that's an automatic no. Okay. A motion for dual gas pub, gas pub. Can I make a motion to deny? Yes. Okay, there's a motion to deny. Uh, anyone second? Who's, I'm sorry. Yeah, All those in favor of the motion to deny. Aye. Aye. Any no's to the motion? Any abstentions? One abstention. Motion passes. Uh, Lucy. Number four. Elmwood Disco Sports Bar, 8414 Roosevelt Avenue. This location does have a history. They didn't come to the meeting. Um, they would have to come back. That's already a no also. They're also under the 500 foot rule. So they need to come back so we can discuss it. So okay. that's an automatic no too. Okay, again. Um, having heard what Lucy says, is there a motion for El Mordisco Sports Club? I second. Motion here and seconded by Sandra. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Anyone against the motion? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Okay. The renewal application, Ayata Guy Incorporated at 7708 Woodside Avenue. This place has an impeccable record, but we had to talk to them because they had petty larceny on February 28, 17. Now, let me explain what that happened. One of the headphones of one of the customers was stolen. She wants, because her headset and phone costs a lot of money, uh, she asked for the police to come to take the report that it happened at that location. They never had a problem with this place. This place has an impeccable record. So they allowed it. So there's really not a crime problem here, but she needed that record so that she can get compensated for her uh, her headphone and her camera. Can I make a motion to approve? Okay. Okay. Sandra. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone against the motion to approve? Any abstentions? Okay. Next one, the Pizzeria Prima at 40-21 108th Street. 
We had a lot of noise complaints with this location throughout the year 2016. We had an assault in 7-2015, right up to 3 22-17, we had a harassment complaint. And this is a place that normally doesn't give us problems, so I was very surprised this happened. So I asked them, do they know about these things? And they said they didn't. So we talked to them about it. Again, it's not a location we normally have this problem. I had a feeling sometimes they have other people running it, and they probably are not watching, and we brought that to their attention. It, this usually is on the fence. Uh, again, they normally are not a bad location. I did talk to the police. They're just watching them carefully, and they're going to start watching who takes care of the location while the owners are not there. And usually it's a manager or someone like that. Okay. So. Motion. Can I just um, ask a question? Because I can't remember. Was this the place that had the issues with underage drinking at the establishment? No. The next one, no. Okay. <laughs> the Is there a motion? One. Like I said. They don't know that they would like to know what the violations are. The noise company came from the neighbors, I know that much. So, I need a motion. So what time were they open to? Uh, I think 12. 12 midnight? Yeah. It's a pizza place. Is there a motion to then, deny or approve this application? Wait a minute, I, I don't understand. It's the biggest complaint, no. the noise, and then the harassment was back in 2017. Yes. 322.17. Oh, oh, oh. No, that's the base one. And then we had a result of an arrest of a complaint on 327.16. Oh. But the cops say, and I'm going to go by this is how we gauge. They said they're going to keep an eye on it. Nine out of ten times they don't give them that much trouble. That'll help you. That's how it goes. Is there a motion? Is it just fair to ask what the committee would vote? Well, well, we well, do. Well, well, I'll tell you what we I do. It's not fair because yeah, Lucy's going to speak for herself, and, right, you know, right. and she can't speak. And there for were people community. here on that. We normally said to them, "We'll send this report. We want them to look at the dates, find out if it is their manager or someone that's taking a woman up there." And um, being that the cops didn't give it a very bad report, we'll say, "Look, we just don't want to see it next time." If that helps you in. Can you go to extend it on time? In other words, they can. No probation no. period. No. no, it's either a yes or no. It's either a vote for yes or no at this point. But yeah. then the next time you go, yeah, exactly. Well, that's right. That's what we yeah. gave them. We're giving them a chance. Like I guess the cops didn't give it a bad report. They just said that this is what is happening. That's wrong. Can anyone else from the committee? I'm making a motion that we give them a chance. All right. Motion is made to approve. She was there. Okay. okay. And second. one second. Five seconds. Okay. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the motion. Aye. Aye. Anyone against the motion? Anyone abstains? Okay. The motion passes. This is the big one. This one we'll take right. off. Last right. one. I need that 14, Roosevelt. This is the one you guys look for. Okay. okay. Noise complaints all throughout 2016. Six assault with complaints from 7 2416 right into 3 2017, which resu resulted in arrest, petty larceny, and 5 16. All in 16, they had what is known as a march. <coughs> Let me explain to you why. From January of 2016 to January 2017, there were sales to minors, improper ID, sales to intox, unreasonable noise, sales to intox again. A march is where they send every agency, police, fire, DEP, Department of Health, um, everything, and, and everything. And they're a So this one should be hard. Is that the motion? And I yeah. second. Okay, so Patricia missed the motion, second the question. Yeah, we're working on that. <laughs> okay, all those in favor of the motion to the Aye. All those against? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Okay, we're finished. Thank you. Uh, uh, transportation. Uh, we had a meeting uh, the other day. Transportation. We had a meeting the other day with uh, IS311. They asked for having the street closed from 97th Street, I believe, and National Street, for the school. They wanted it for in the morning when they had uh, the children entering the school, and a dismissal when the children leave the school. And we had no problem with that. They also asked for a break around lunchtime to have the street closed so the kids could get out and stretch their legs and do whatever it was. We said to them, we didn't think that there would be a problem with that, but there's two businesses over there. And we asked them to check with the businesses. If the businesses don't have a problem, 
Then what we need from them was an okay from the businesses. They were supposed to do it themselves, check on the businesses. And then give us a list of the people that are going to be responsible for monitoring the street. Because in the morning, you have the crossing guard. And in the, uh, uh, the dismissal, you have the crossing guard. But in the afternoon, you didn't have one. So we wanted a list of all the teachers uh, or school employees that are going to be responsible for that. They said they were going to get it to us. And I told them school's going to end. Don't rush. Get everything together. Have it to us before school starts. So they're going to get it to the community board before the school starts. And then we'll have a meeting prior to our first meeting and give a, a report on that and let you know about what, whether they did or they didn't get the OK. I don't foresee a problem. I think we can do it. But I just told them to come back with us with that information. So we're just waiting for them to come back with that. OK, so are we voting on this, or we're not No, I think we got to hold off to it until the next. Until the next. Yeah, without the information, we can't vote on it. Oh, no, that's right. No, actually, what, what is the presentation? Yeah, they were going to change. Okay, actually, hold on, hold on. So I, I did have a conversation with Christina. I did have a conversation with Chris early on today. I believe that I know you were probably told that, you know, don't worry about it. But from what we understand, they needed to get a decision from us in June, at the beginning of June. No, so, no, no. no. They said that's, they that's, what, that's what we have. No, I, I know that's not. No, no. They said that yeah, they had. Yeah, that's Because Christian spoke to, who did he speak to? Do we know? Scripture did speak to somebody. Well, and it, 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 so we don't but it could be I understand. Can, can, can we get all right. No, to have the meeting. Have it had the, we had to have the meeting right. before the, the, the cutoff time, which is the 30th. Sure. Uh, we had the meeting. Okay. We're just holding off until we get the response from them. From them. We agreed to have in the morning with the crossing guard, and we agreed to have a dismissal with the crossing guard to close the street. Sure. That's not a problem. Yeah. But they asked for an additional closing for the uh, lunchtime, the, the lunchtime <laughs> so the kids can go out. Because if the schools, you know, they don't have a schoolyard. Right, so speak me, I just want to double check. I want to confirm a question because okay. I was speaking to him earlier today, and he did mention that, yes, we understand this might go forward, and we probably don't have a problem. And I understand you were just looking for additional information. But from what I understand, and we're finding out right now, that I think we do have to vote on it today because it needed to be, there needed to be a decision in June. And then obviously we're not going to meet right, going forward. So, okay, so it has to be voted on today. So it has to be voted on. The only thing we can vote on is the, uh, uh, the, the, the kids arrive and when they dismissal. Sure. Not the lunch. Uh, but we can't vote on the lunch. They so have right. to come back mm -hmm. to us for lunch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're not, we're not going to be able to separate that. It, it's either going to be it, the way it is. It's going to have to either we vote on it or we decide not to vote on it. Oh, sorry, we decide to deny it at this point. But it does have to be done in June. And obviously, we're not meeting again until September. Mm -hmm. So we need to make a vote on it today. And you know, I'm going to look towards I'll, you. I'm going to vote in favor. Uh, OK, I, so, I mean, so I'm, I'm going to ask what the suggestion is. Well, the committee was in favor of closing the street. Okay. We just wanted to check with a couple people, but I don't think there's going to be a problem. Okay. So uh, that's so the committee. Will, will, will you make a motion? Agree. Will you make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. OK, motion is made to, yeah. to agree to, to approve accept the second district. OK. Any discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone against this motion? No. Any abstentions? Lucy abstains. The motion passes. Thank you very much. Um, youth committee. Hey, good evening, everybody. Um, I know we've had a long meeting so far, so I just want to please ask you to bear with me for a couple more minutes because we do have to vote on something tonight. So during our last month's uh, committee meeting, we had someone named Irfan Ar Ahmed from the Mayor Fund to Advance New York City project present to us about putting uh, synthetic soccer fields in schools, that they were going to do this around all of New York City. So Sandra, correction, it wasn't parks, it was schools around New York City. And, but what he was presenting to us, and this was a rather very quick meeting. He presented to us, he gave us the information he had to give us, we asked a few questions, and he left. And ultimately, we voted yes on it. But after it was, the, the matter of the fact was after they had left that we had some concerns that we didn't raise when they were there. So this is going on to give you the information in PS19. He came to present to us to do this in PS19. That's in 9802 Roosevelt Avenue. Uh, as you know, today there are no reps from this program. Uh, it is a mayor's initiative. And when we asked, there was also no letter of support from the principal of that school. So Christina, I think, is passing out some information from that program that presented to us that day. 
So they walked us through all the logistics. Everything seemed good. Just to give you a very quick summary about what goes on. These programs, uh, again, mayor initiative is uh, given to a school. Set amount of money is allocated. After school, uh, the kids have people who train them and they play soccer in these synthetic fields and they get some exercise. Now the problem and the concerns arise were after. So after the program, after the training takes place, which I think roughly it ends around 6 p.m. If you have it in front of you, you can verify. After the training takes place, the gate is left open for anyone else to come into these fields all night and for the remainder of the day. So that is a big concern because this school in 9802 and Roosevelt Avenue, we know uh, there are a lot of people who congregate there at late times of the night, vendors, yeah. people uh, just walking by, looking for a place to stay, a place to, uh, you know, excuse the expression, cause trouble. So as a committee, we feel that we do not want to give space for things that would require more of a police presence or that would uh, make anything illegal present. Or, and we all agreed that although these initiatives are great, and although we would all love for uh, soccer to, I'm, I'm a big so soccer fan myself, we would all love to see kids uh, more energetic and uh, active in their uh, daily school routine and after school routines, that we feel that this doesn't work everywhere, not in every school. So the school, the location that we were presented, ultimately, although we voted yes, we still need a full board vote. And I want to express these concerns to you so that you do know that there is a danger in having these, uh, this open for the rest of the night. Yeah. And when we asked, when we asked this, uh, the, the person, Mr. Ahmed, he said that it was up to the principal if they could close the gate afterward. So it falls on the principal, and that's ultimately what happens. So if you have any questions or anything, well, any other questions? Why would the principal want to have the gate closed? Well, I, I think that, that he spoke to a little bit about having someone go out there and actually physically closing the gate. Because like the custodian would have to work at Yeah, the so I, I remember we touched on that and then the principal might not see a need. For closing the gate? Yeah. Well, they'd probably have to pay the person yeah. extra the to come. The custodian. Well, there is a custodian No, the kids train up until 6 with people who are there, train, trainers that are... And they can't close the gate? No, they leave it open because they're... It's a custodian space. It's open space. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I got a little Got a question? Back what you're doing. Yeah. Our original battle of the parks are trying to get them closed at night because of that reason. It's a park that we have here. We have people going in there. But to school, you have to close it. Yeah. Yeah, I, but to come close it, you have to have somebody more regular coming close to walk this. So, can, can I say something? I, I believe the way I understand it is that it cannot be locked because, because it is a public place. So, even though it's on yeah. school yeah. grounds, it must stay open at all times. Is that correct? Right. Yeah, it must stay open at all times. So, the concern I believe that he's raising is that, okay, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, there's no one there. The school's not going to pay for it. From what I understand from the conversation I have with Christian today was that they're just coming in, putting it, we're done, we're out, you guys take care of it. School takes care of it, community takes care of it, we have nothing to do. We brought the field, and that's it, and we're out. So I think that was the concern that Christian is coming. I think that's what came out after the meeting, after that, you know. It's, it's all good, it sounds all good, but I think that's the concern that now it stays open, there's no one closing it. You can't close it off. You can't close off that section of the park now because it must stay open at all times. Mm -hmm. I have a yeah. question. I have a question. Yes. Because I'm having difficulty Sandra. understanding the logic behind that only because it's closed now, right? No. After hours. Yeah. No. No. Do they close it now? No, no. no. After no, there's, hours, there's is that area right closed? There is and it's open all the time. They're gonna, they're, the proposal is to place the soccer field there for the use of the children and then the public as well. Okay. So my question is well, we know who's going to use it, but my question is, it's open now? There's nothing, there's there's nothing there's there's there. there. And they're going to fence it in? It's already there. I think they're already in the fence. It's fence is there right so now. They're gonna have to so it's an open lot, let's say, right now. It's, it's a open yard. Yeah. Yeah. It's a school yard. It's a school yard. It's a school yard. It's a school school yard. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I think her question, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Please, I think Sandra's question, correct from Roy, is that if, if it's fenced in right now, is it closed? After hours? Right, so I haven't physically seen the site, so I can't tell you yes or no, but once the field is there, it will be open, so that's what we're trying to address. So it has to be open. Yeah, okay, it has to be open. Uh, Alerio? Well, I've been in PS19 almost 18 years now with the cadets, so I know they close the school at 7 p.m. 
Okay. Every, day. Yard, Every day. Every day they kick everybody out. So when the public only got an hour? No, we shouldn't do it. So then that's now, that's what I mean. They've been playing on Saturday mornings, and I've asked to come in there. They're already playing soccer. Right. Okay, but it's that during the day. Right. All right, but after seven. Right, so then that I, I assume that the school is uh, providing for someone to go and close the gates. No, it's a private uh, uh, football league. Let's just, let's not call it soccer, it's called football. All right. right, it's a football league, local. You know, they come in there, they play the team. And he locked it. And he locked it. Right, so if it's closed, then I assume that wouldn't be an issue. But Did, has anybody spoken to the school? Was the school in favor? No, we right. haven't, right. haven't heard right. anything from the school. I don't we haven't think gotten the board away. from the principal. We don't know what they think, so we are missing that information. So, so I want to take this this um, uh, vote until we get more information, until we contact the school and our questions are answered by the city. Right, okay. right. so we have a motion to table. I second so, it. And second it. Yes. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Any no's? Any abstentions? The motion passes. And other than that, that was it. Have a great summer, everybody. Consumer uh, Affairs? Um, well, I just wanted to, to say thank you to my committee. We had a great committee meeting, and it was great to have some feedback from the Department of Consumer Affairs. It was wonderful to have them here tonight. I hope you all learned a little bit more about their department. They also said that if you have any complaints, if you have any complaints, if you are in a business, they don't give you a receipt. If they don't have certain signs posted about refund policies and receipt policies and minimum card charge policies, you can report those businesses to 311, make a complaint. If it's something very serious that you want to follow up with, you could speak to me, um, or you can, uh, I can give you the email for one of the gentlemen that was here tonight, and you can give him the complaint number, and he will follow up with those complaints. But they did suggest that everybody calls 311 first, so you have a number so they can track it. And um, I think that's it, so Great. thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Uh, environmental. Sorry, there's no report. Okay, great. Right. Health. Thank you. Great, no report. And Euler, Alton. We had a great meeting. The old committee had a great meeting, workshop. Uh, thanks to Mass and Create New York City. Um, it was very informative. And on the 28th, we're going to have a debriefing of the exercises that we did during the math to start at 7 o'clock and it'll be at Queens in the Mall. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Yes. Sorry, for the environmental committee, I just forgot to add to, we're meeting tomorrow night. Oh, so okay. Well, there you go. Right, so, yeah, just, just before I forget, um, which I was already, um, Christina gave out slips for the committee selections. Top three, please, you know, if you're gonna leave, uh, please just turn it over to her so we don't forget it, so we can have that. I'm sure probably walking around right now, just picking them up. Um, we are now opening the public forum. We have a few people signed up. We have, I believe, I'm sorry if I butcher your names, but I can't really, Ronnie. Yeah, yep, come on, come on forward, please. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, pardon my appearance, but uh, <clears throat> my name is Rooney Mensch. I live in this community for about 25 years or more. Retired from the city of New York. Uh, to let you all know how close I am with the community, my wife worked for uh, uh, Attorney Gloria Serino for quite some time. And uh, I'm also the board president of Neighborhood Housing Services for 20 years, uh, Northern Queens, and uh, until three months ago, I was the board president for the citywide section. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice. The reason why I'm here tonight is the, uh, to request the assistance of the board and uh, perhaps our local officials, our elected officials, to reverse a problem that's presently in this neighborhood. Actually, it's two, but the major, the major one that I'm going to talk tonight is the, uh, what, I, what people believe is an illegal shelter in the Holiday Inn Hotel. I don't know if the community board is aware of it. 
or uh, what's going on, but I could give you some real examples of problems that occurred during the past year in this neighborhood. Uh, I myself, uh, for the past year, I think I changed about six backup mirrors on my car. I'm not blaming them on them. Uh, I know homeless people, they need a place to stay, so you know it's, it's nice to think to give them a place. But it depends upon who you put in that place. Right now, the, the minute, now that I'm talking to you, I guarantee you, not only that, I know there's sex offenders in that hotel at this minute. Okay, I don't think that's fair to the neighborhood. Back about six months ago, <clears throat> an SUV stopped at the corner of Van Cleef, and so tell, the driver stopped the car, he got off, he fell to the ground, he had a stab wound. So when questioned, he says he was stabbed in uh, Woodside. There were two guys in the back. One of them got off, ran down the block, and went right into that hotel. I have seen him. The cops were there, they can confirm it. And the corner of Cleve itself, right where that hotel is, this guy back up a car, hit a taxi back and forth, get up, pull a knife, stab the taxi driver. When he was arrested, supposedly he was the same guy that they were looking for in Manhattan for stabbing a lady. He was in that hotel. Okay, stolen and abandoned cars. Finally, sanitation and our nice NYPD, they clear it. There's a bunch of them on that corner. They're gone, finally. The gas station was held up at two o'clock in the afternoon at gunpoint. Those things never happened before in the neighborhood. Why are they happening now? You know, the type of people that are there. I, let me tell you guys one thing. I did 32 years in jail, not as an inmate, as an employee. I'm a retired business manager for the city of New York Correction Department. So I know a little bit about crime and a little bit how to hook it up to certain things. And that's what's going on there. It's not, it's not fair to us. I live right there. The majority of people that was here tonight since this meeting last you know, long, they left. But they all came to testify. The second problem is that while they were building that extension to that hotel, the garbage truck that comes and, and, and take the garbage, rip off all those uh, cables that run across the street, and some of them are still hanging there. If you look, this neighborhood is loaded with cables all over. It does happen in other neighborhoods. Three weeks ago, the fire department was there. My bell is ringing, I get off the fire department, the man has said to me, look, can we go on top of your roof? They call for some smoke, but we cannot lift the bucket because there's too many cables in the street. Six months ago, this one right here in the corner in front of the, uh, the supermarket caught fire. The entire thing blew up. I mean, between the hotel and those two things, my God, we, we you know, it, it cannot be done, so I'm requesting I'm um, very seldom, I mean, this is the first time I attend this meeting, even though my wife worked there for a long time. Uh, we need either the community board know about it or because they did mention the name of some politicians that they knew about it in that hotel when I confronted the security guard myself in person. So it's something that I believe somebody knew about it and we didn't know about it. Some of the people that are here today find out about it last week that that hotel is being used as a shelter. I mean, please, we, we, we're Can requesting help. Yeah, sure, uh, just a quick question. Um, there's yeah. the Holiday Inn you're talking about. Right there okay. the so, so, just, just so you know, you know, again, speaking to Christian today, yes. he has done a lot already. He's done what, right. I mean, pretty much we have been doing what the community board, what the office can do. Right. I believe he's already reached out to Department of Social Services, particularly yes. Amanda Nasner, and we asked to get a community advisory board meeting together we haven't got we got a response but we haven't gotten uh, a concrete response yet so we're still waiting a response for that okay. i believe we've also mailed out you know we, we contacted Sandra peralta's office assemblyman aubrey's office councilwoman ferrara copeland's office Correct. at this point we've only gotten a response back for Sandra peralta uh -huh. willing to do yeah. what's going on but we're still waiting on for more people to get to, to come back to us and lastly i believe i don't think it was you it's one, it's one of your uh, someone probably with you that we've we've we suggested that you collect signatures about what's going on. We you did. did collect the signatures, yeah. and then we've also gave you the addresses of all the elected officials to go ahead and, you know, I believe it was Christina who gave you, not you, but it was probably somebody else that was with you, that gave you the address in order to, you know, give out personally. 
So, okay. so, so again, we, we are with you. Right. We, are, we understand, I know Christian, you know, it's one of the things Christian has been doing, and I know because I'm on the email chains and I saw this email chain. So we are reaching out. We're trying to get everyone, all the stakeholders together at some point. And, you know, at this point, we're willing to get together. I know you're willing to get together. Yeah. We have oh, Senator yeah. Peralta's willingness to get together. We're just waiting for other people. We're waiting for DSS to get back to us to say something. So just so everybody knows, we are doing something. We are yeah. aware of this. Okay. And, you know, we appreciate you coming and, and letting us know. I did mention, I did get in touch with Peralta. He's the only one that answered me back also. Sure. So, so, I mean, so we, we sure. will follow it up. I mean, give us, <coughs> give us a call. Give the office a call. And we will keep following up with, with that. Thank you, sir. Okay? Thank you for the time. Thank you Thank very you much. All. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have Erica Montoya. Just want to re remind the uh, public speakers, uh, we, you know, we limited this to three minutes each, so please uh, keep it brief. Thank you. Good evening. Buenas noches. Can you guys hear me? Yes. I'm really yes. Bad at this. Okay. Um, my name is Erika Montoya, and I wanted to come to introduce myself and also let you know that I am running for City Council District uh, 21. So. Um, uh, Julissa Ferreras uh, district. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know. And you know, I was uh, born and raised in here in, in Queens in Corona. Uh, born at St. John's Hospital. Some of you might remember it. Um, so, so yeah. So I just wanted to make sure to introduce myself and let, um, I can stick around for a little bit. I know it's been a long. Uh, it was just to introduce myself. Yeah, it's just, oh, it's just I'm just an intro. It's just an introduction. It's just, an introduction. I just want to let you know. Uh, okay, my apologies. Thank so you. I'll leave it at that. And um, all right, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have next Christina Furlong. I have to pull it down. So, oh, sorry. I don't need to do it anyway. No, you don't need that. That being said, <laughs> that being said. <laughs> um, I, I was really happy to be here to, to listen to what is going on at PS19 with the schoolyard. And I must tell you, do not do anything until you understand who is in charge of that schoolyard. Because I've been fighting that same fight at PS89. And um, I complained because the schoolyard is open. It's getting destroyed. Um, it's not the Parks Department. They tell me over and over again, it's not the Parks Department. And <laughs> Rosa Benny and I have been fighting it. It's the Trust for Public Land who has our schoolyard, play yard thing that Bloomberg did. The Trust for Public Land says they have nothing to do with it. They just built the playground. And when I call and complain, the custodian gets in trouble. Aww. Yes. And the custodian is saying, we can't lock that door because we get paid extra money to maintain the yard. And the principal says, well, we can't lose that extra money. And what's going on at PS19 is a much bigger issue because it's a full-size soccer field. So I've, I've been doing it for about a year at our school and they've gotten nowhere and also a play street. And um, we have a full day, eight, eight to four play street on Glean in between Britain and Elmhurst. It might not be this community board, but it's the line there. Um, which we desperately need with 2,000 kids, but the principal won't open it. We do it for dismissal and arrival. Um, the police department knows about it, so maybe they need to know about that. Um, the principal won't do it during the day, she said, because there are known sexual predators in the neighborhood who are there all the time anyway, and we would have the school aides around. So on both those issues, I was happy to hear it because do, don't let them move forward without knowing who's paying for it, who's cleaning it up, who's gonna come, I finally this year filed a vandalism report and the 110 precinct um, did the report, reviewed the loss of damages and did the report. But we don't want the custodian getting in trouble anywhere because Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have Cody Herman. Did I get it right? Yeah. Hey guys, uh, my name is Cody Herman. I um, live in Flushing. For the last couple of years, I've been doing a lot of advocacy around water quality in Flushing Bay and Creek. Um, so tonight, I'm here with Riverkeeper and Guardians of Flushing Bay. Um, Riverkeeper just got a really big grant to start. They're an environmental watchdog organization that takes care of the Hudson River and the greater estuary, so all the way up from Troy down to our neighborhood here. 
Um, so they just got a really big grant to start doing visioning plans in New York City. So the two places they chose are Newtown Creek and Flushing Bay and Creek. So we're calling it the Flushing Waterways. Um, but obviously that extends into Flushing Meadow Corona Park, Willow Lake, Meadow Lake, all those are kind of part of the same system. Um, so we're having a big visioning session at the Queens Museum on Friday, June 23rd. So not this Friday, but next Friday um, from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, and really it's going to be an opportunity to talk to local experts, talk to people about your thoughts on zoning, your thoughts about how, I mean we all know there's so much development with Willits Point, with Flushing West, there are so many chances for things to change. And if we don't get a consolidated voice with our community's opinion in it, um, I think we might miss our chance. So that's kind of the way that Riverkeeper's looking at it. That's the way I'm looking at it as their outreach coordinator for this. Um, and I'm just really excited that they're doing this in our community and that somebody wants to invest in this neighborhood and in the waterways, which are so often forgotten. Um, so yeah, I have a bunch of flyers. If any of the board members want flyers, I can hand you some. And then there are some in the back too. And I guess no questions for public commentary, but I'll be around. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I can't re silence my can't make out this name, but I believe the last name starts with a R E N L O maybe. Okay. Sorry, introduce yourself because I can't read. Hi, how are you everybody? Listen, um, we write the letter. And I find it only like three weeks ago. I'm working all day. But in front of my house is four guys a smoking week. And I say, excuse me, uh, where are you from? From Holiday Inn Express. I say, I don't care you for Holiday Inn Express. And I just wonder, who is these people? And then I started asking my neighbor, you see different people in the neighbor? I live 27 years in this neighbor. I love my neighbor. And here before, you see so many people, it's people for 45 years in the neighbor, 35 years in the neighbor. We all know each other, but everybody works. And what happened? We made the letter. And personal, two weeks ago, I bring the letter because we collecting 200 signs. I knock the door, I say, excuse me, you know who is in this hotel? Because one of the members of my family, she's detective. And she said, you know what? You had two sets of fender in this, in this, in this hotel. And they registered. And I said, what? I say, be careful. And I just, you know, raise the voice in my neighbor. I say, excuse me, we have to be careful. We have sex offender and nobody knows. Nobody say nothing. I went to the office with Miss Ferreira and she say, the people working for her say, oh, we don't have club. We don't nothing about it. I say, I had to begin for something. Somebody had to help us. And we come in for the community because we are alone. We write the letter for the, even I suggested for Division of Criminal Justice about sex offenders, because we don't know where we start. And like the guy said before, I don't know, when I'm talking with Ronnie, he's my neighbor, the wife with the lawyer married me long time ago, we are friends. And he's, I say, Ronnie, we have these issues. He's in Florida, and I send the copy to the letter. I say, we have something, we have a big problem in the hotel, and he say, I know that. I talking three times with Peralta. I say, well, I just went yesterday to Peralta. And Peralta say, well, this is problem for the city. I went to Ferrara, this is city problem. I say, where's the city? Who is? I voted for you. What do you want to do for us? That's it. And this is the city. Okay. I went, stop, 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 stop. I went to the NYPD. They tell me very well. The guy was here before. And he said, sit down, wait, how I can help you? I say, we have sex offender. We don't know what the city putting over there. Okay. That means we are alone. We don't know where we start. I went to Chris, to the office. He listened to me. I say, Chris, we have to start for something. We are 35 years old neighbor, and nobody want to help us. No Peralta, no Ferreira, 
And the other guy, this uh, uh, Mr. Jeffrey Aubrey. I went to his office. Because I ha I collecting 250, you know, signs for people. I can lend in the, the sign for somebody. I give personal. I thank God this day everybody received me. But Peralta say, no. I don't know. I want to send you some NYPD. We don't see NYPD over there. We see, I live close to the nursing homes. They rob to the nurses. They do a lot of things in our neighborhood, and nobody do nothing. Please, you say you want to take care of that. As I, as I mentioned earlier, as I turn to your, to your colleague, we did reach out to the, the assemblyman, the, con the senator, the councilwoman. We reached out to DSS as well. You know, we are doing what the community board can do, okay? So we're doing everything we can. I understand they've got you, they got information, they made suggestions that you go ahead and collect the signatures and deliver the signatures. So again, we are doing everything we can. We are hearing what you're saying, we hear what your colleague is saying, and we are, I'm not saying we're on your side, I'm not saying we're not on your side, but we want to bring in all the parties together so we can sit down and talk about that. So that's what we're trying to do. That is the real, I don't know because again, we reached out to DSS, we asked them to get together so we could do a CAP style meeting, a community, a, a community advisory board committee so we can sit down and talk about all these issues, okay? So that's the extent of what we can do and I understand what your frustration is, but again, we, you know, we are limited to what we can do. I, we're, 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 okay, I understand, but she's talking, I'm addressing her, that's why I'm telling her. Your frustration, the people who are with you is frustration. We are doing what we can do. This We're doing what working in PS14. Ma'am, 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 I hear you. nobody send the letter to PS14. Okay, I understand. Okay, ma'am, I understand what you're saying, and I'm explaining to you that we are doing our capacity. We are doing our job. Christian, Christina are doing their job based on your complaints. That's what we're here to do, okay? Excuse me? Just go ahead, sure. Okay, and in regards to the two sex offenders, there was a sex offender, uh, we discovered that there was a sex offender there several months ago. We spoke to DHS, we reached out, and he was removed. Now we just found out that according to the sex offender registry that there is another one listed there. We reached out to DHS and they said that he was placed there for a short time, but he is no longer at that address. He is in somewhere in Manhattan, however the sex offender registry still lists that as his address. So currently, DHS is not homing any sex offenders in there. Yes, there were sex offenders. However, one of them we picked, we noticed, and we contacted DHS, and it was removed. The other one was placed at a later point, but he has also been removed. However, the sex offender registry was not updated, so it still shows that as his address. So we have been actively working. As soon as we saw, we reached out. So there are currently not any sex offenders living at that hotel. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right, so we have Leanne, uh, is it Bowley? Leanne Bowley? Leanne? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I couldn't tell. Oh, G only, all right. I thought it was G only. G Bowley. Yes, there you go. Hi, good evening, everyone. I know it's late, so I'll be fast. My name is Leanne G. Bowley. I'm uh, Please. Nonprofit uh, professional here. I'm an artist and I'm a resident over at 82nd or Ithaca and Baxter. And from what the, what the website says, that is in this community board. I can see from my living room the new Silence development. Silence back there, please. At the 82nd uh, Street Theater, movie theater that's going to be now a Target. And I love my neighborhood. My husband and I have lived there for quite some time. We own our apartment and um, we're full of. Lots of families, elderly people, young people, and it's very congested, and I'm very concerned about traffic and sanitation um, and those types of things. And I was just curious about what the community board's doing in collaboration with the developer who said some things that I find offensive to my community, um, who is bringing in Target, and there's all those issues as well, and also just the fact that they're planning on community space there, so I'm wondering if the community board's at all advised of that and if there's any collaboration with local organizations because there's not a lot of transparency and I can see it from my living room going up. Um, it looks like the construction's safe so far. They haven't been doing construction in rain or anything, which I applaud, but um, I just wanted to bring it to your awareness and if I can partner in any way with you, I'd love to. So thank Great. you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
right. So that is the last person signed up for public forum. Do we have a motion to, or, hold on. Oh, okay. Yes, I keep forgetting that. So Ashley Reed is collecting money for the Sunshine Fund. Um, I think the last time she collected, I think we got like $90 or something like that. So, you know, as you know, I think the Sunshine Fund, we use it to, you know, make donations in case there is any kind, you know, as, as you know, Tony Moreno's passing and also to, you know, I think that this funds our Christmas party as well. So, you know, I think we all want a big Christmas party, right? So please donate. And um, I just want to wish everyone a happy summer. Stay safe, stay cool. And um, obviously, I'm, I'm going to be here for the summer. So if there's anything that I can help you, anybody with, you know, please contact me. We're not done yet. So we need to make a motion to adjourn this. Motion adjourned, seconded by Lucy. All those in favor? Thank you. Have a happy summer. This is made by Lirio, seconded by Lucy.